Okay. All right. Good morning, Mario. All right, I will give you just A few more minutes or another minute here to get that written out, okay? So obviously if you're going back and you're watching a live video since I'm not recording, I'm only recording some of them, um, you're going to want to fast forward through some parts, right? So they're there for your reference or if you miss class, but you want to make sure that I'm talking obviously and working on working through stuff. All right. So we're going to talk about dividing polynomials. Um, we're going to do um, the explore today because it talks about synthetic substitution. And so I'm planning on doing the explore and um, what else? And explain one. Okay. And then that will leave us next week to do what probably explain two. Okay. I think that's where I want to be. And it's not coming up. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, explain to what we'll do next week, okay? But ex if I do the explore, explain to shouldn't be too bad to do on video because it's kind of the same process, okay? Um, so that's why I'm doing it that way. So um, in the past with polynomials here, and again, I'm sorry that it copied and pasted fuzzy. I need to do my copy and paste a different way for the next set of notes. Um, so, Polynomials can be written in something called nested form. So a polynomial in nested form is written in such a way that evaluating it involves an alternating sequence of additions and multiplications. For instance, the nested form of P of X um, equals 4X cubed plus 3X squared plus 2X plus 1 is P of X equals X times X times 4X plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which you evaluate by starting with 4, multiplying by the value of X, adding 3, multiplying by X, adding 2, multiplying by X, and adding 1. So basically they're saying there, there's other ways to be able to solve or rearrange polynomials, okay? So we're not going to try to rearrange this one. Let's just solve this polynomial just like we always would do. So what is this saying that we need to do with that negative two? Can you guys tell me in the chat? That's our first kind of participation thing in the chat. What do I need to do with that negative two to solve that function? I've got some really good things. And every single one came up came up better, right? Um, plug it in is absolutely what we got to do. Brendan was a little bit more detailed. He said plug it in for X. Mariana switched it to substitute. I like that word. So substitute it in for X. All right. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute it in for X. So we've got P of negative 2 equals 4 times negative 2 cubed plus three times negative two squared plus two times negative two plus one. Okay. All right, negative two cubed would be eight, negative two squared would be four, negative two times, or two times negative two would be negative four plus one. Let's see, oh wait, I messed up, didn't I? Where did I mess up? Who can tell me where I messed up? Because I found a mistake. What did I do wrong? What do you think? 
Has anybody caught it yet? What did I do wrong? Ah, uh, that's right. Eight, it should be negative eight. Good job. Okay. Eight's not supposed to be positive. Uh, I should be a negative here. So I'm going to fix that. So, because it was negative two times negative two times negative two, right? If we have an odd exponent, we keep the sign. If we have an even exponent, we make it positive, right? Um, so, because these would make it positive four times negative two would be negative eight. All right. Um, so let's see, we've got negative four times negative eight is negative 32. Three times four is 12. And then negative four and positive one would be negative three. And then I'm going to add that up. And I believe we get negative 23. Double check my work. Make sure I'm right. So I'm going to give you a second to make sure you've added that up. And if you see a mistake in my work, please, please, please let me know. You have to catch it. Okay, because look, I didn't write the negative 8, right? Okay. But my question is, what if there was a better way to do that or a different way to do that? So this is kind of like a party trick. Okay, but it's a true mathematical method to get this to work. Okay, so we're going to work with this exact same set of numbers. Okay, and we're going to set up what we call synthetic substitution. I'm noticing a delay today. Um, you can set up an array of numbers that captures the sequence of multiplication and additions needed to find P of A. Use this array to find P of A to, to called synthetic substitution. So. We are going to, um, I'm not going to worry about what this says, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. So whatever we have that they want us to plug in, we're going to put in this little box. Okay. And then I'm going to write just the coefficients. So you've got four, three, two, one. And then that's a big equal sign. Okay, but notice I left a gap of space on purpose. This is kind of like you did addition um, in elementary school, vertically, right? Vertical addition when you did multi-digit numbers. All right, so here's the steps, okay? Um, and I'm sure that they were describing steps in the book and they gave you an ex example that was where all the steps were worked out, which drove me crazy because it meant one last example so that you worked out. So. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk through the steps. I'm not gonna show maybe a lot of arrows, but um, we can. You can always go back to the video when you have to do it and and try it with the video again. Okay. So I'm gonna drop the four. So the first step is you drop the first number. Okay. Then I am going to take this and I'm going to multiply it by four. Okay. So this this you always multiply by what's down in the uh, underneath the equal sign. So negative two times four is negative eight. Negative eight now and going up and down, I'm going to add. Okay, so three plus negative eight would be negative five. Now I'm going to multiply again. Okay, so negative two times negative five would be positive 10. And then I'm going to add again. So two plus 10 is 12. Okay, so tell me in the chat, what do you think I'm going to do with the negative 2 and the 12? What operation am I going to do next? Tell me. No, you're paying attention. You're understanding. What am I doing next? All right. Good job. We are going to multiply. That's right. So I've got negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. All right, and then I'm going to add one and negative 24 and I get negative 23. All right, I want you to check out what just happened. Wasn't this the same polynomial that we had here? And look at what happened. I just got the exact same answer. And I didn't have to use a calculator. I didn't have to raise any exponents. I didn't make any weird mistakes with my signs. Isn't that kind of a cool way to, just a different way to set up solving for a polynomial? So I really like 
that um, method, and it's called synthetic substitution. So it's another way to do something we already know how to do. You might be able to do it faster that way. I know if I, I we went really slow because I was teaching the process, but um, it is a way to go a little bit faster than doing this. Okay. Most of the time, we all default to what we did in A. Okay, because um, we just have been doing that for so long. But if you can remember to do it this way, that's a, that's a that's a way for you to do it. Um, this is going to relate directly to what you do um, on, Mon on Monday's lesson, probably on video. I'll probably have you do that in video, okay? So um, just, you know, we, so we've seen it once together. So, um, so basically, we already kind of talked about the reflect question. What does it correspond to? So it corresponds um, to the, the answer when we, when we did... Um, Direct substitution is what this was, right? When we did direct substitution for um, in part A. So uh, the answer of the, an the final addition, I'm gonna use their words, final addition corresponds to the answer from, that says from the direct substitution. Give you a minute to write that, okay? Okay. So the only thing in math class that strikes more fear than fractions, right? What strikes more fear than fractions? What's worse than fractions? Tell me in the chat, what's worse than fractions? Fractional exponents? No, we're not going there. I think once you've got fractions in it, it's fractions, right? It doesn't matter if it's an exponent or... What's worse than fractions? It's one of our favorites, right? Okay, you ready? You ready? Long division, right? Long division is probably worse than fractions. So we're not only gonna do long division today, but we're gonna do long division with polynomials. Doesn't that sound like fun? Doesn't that sound amazing? All right, so let's remember how to do long division, okay? Um, so I'm going to uh, do a, put a long division problem here. We're going to go way back. We're going to go back to like third grade way back, okay? Um, so long division, I don't know, it might be, some, some of you may have seen it in second. You guys are, well, maybe not. It might have been fourth because you guys are still ahead of the common core group. So we, I, I know exactly where the kids who started in <laughs> I know exactly where the kids who started in Common Core Math. They, my daughter's grade started Common Core Math in kindergarten. So um, you guys are just a little bit ahead of the wave. So we're gonna do 12 divided by 277, okay? Um, so the first thing I need to do is I need to decide how many times 12 goes into 27. Cause So can you help me out with that in the chat? How many times does 12 divide 27? And again, make sure you're participating in the chat because I'm going to give you participation. Gradebook should have opened up today for semester two so I can get that in and finish up your other grades as well. Okay. Good job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So we're going to put in a two. Now, what am I supposed to do from here to, to continue long division? So what operation do I have to do? Can you tell me that in the chat? Coral, thank you for catching yourself. Okay, so the, the rule is now we have to take the two and we have to multiply it by 12. Okay, so two times 12 is 24. Now we have to subtract, right? That's the next thing, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna switch to subtract. So it's multiply, subtract is the pattern, right? Multiply 
then subtract. And you guys, that is something like that um, is what I want, what you should be seeing in the left hand column of your notes, right? I set them up in the focus note style just to help those that are an avid. I don't necessarily like it, but and that's not how I was ever, ever took notes. But sometimes it does give us a nice space to write things. And remember, sometimes what I say is more important than what I write down, okay, on the screen. So it's not just about copying what I write down, but copying um, notes in addition to um, what I write down. My daughter um, went to Rancho last year, and you guys, a lot of you went through Rancho, and you know that they, they make you learn how to do the focus notes or the Cornell notes, right? And she's like, I hated it. And now she's at Western Center and there's no structure to the notes and she can take them however she wants. But she she kind of realized that, oh, there was some goodness in some of the things that we did here. Um, but she said she made hers too colorful last year. So she needs to make them a little less colorful. All right. So let's do our subtract. Um, 27 minus 24 is 3. Okay. And then I'm going to drop down that 7. So all I do is literally drop it. Then I ask myself, how many times does 12 divide 37? So now it's back to division again. How many times does this go into this? And that would be about three times. And it's an estimate, right? We're not going to make it perfect. So three times 12 is 36. I did multiply and subtract again. And seven, 37 minus 6 is 1. Okay. We are not, we're going so far back, we're not doing decimals. We're going to do remainders. That's like, way, we probably haven't done a remainder in like six years, right? All right, so our remainder would be one. We would have one left over, okay? However, there's a fancier way to write that, okay? A fancier way to write that would actually be that this is 23 and 1 12th, right? Because it would divide by, um, we, we really would take this one divided by the 12 out there. So we're going to use this concept today. I don't use the vocabulary that goes with division very often, but let's talk about the parts one last time. We know that this part here is called the dividend. And again, I don't use it a whole lot. This part here is called the quotient. Okay, and obviously the whatever's left over that you can't divide anymore, that's what we call the remainder. Probably the only one you remember is the remainder, right? Okay, so we're going to apply that same concept with a few tweaks to polynomials, okay? So I'm going to go somewhat slow, okay? Um, and I believe I did, I'm doing a Delta math assignment. So the book does a crazy, like how they want the, this thing to be. I'm not going to do that because I think when I was looking through Delta math, it didn't leave it like that. It left it like what I'm going to show you. Okay. So I'm going to, if we're getting something crazy in the homework, then you guys got to let me know. All right, so I'm going to do long division with this. So I'm going to set up enough space. Notice I'm leaving a little bit of a gap here at the top, and I'm leaving a gap on the side, so I'm going to have enough space to write things, and I'm not trying to squish everything in. Okay, so this piece here is always going to go inside the division sign. It's technically the divisor. So 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. And then whatever you're dividing by goes on the outside. So x squared plus 3x plus 1. All right, now we're going to divide. And again, we use this when factoring doesn't work, right? Because factoring is probably a, it is a good alternative um, to, uh, what should I call it, Divi to long division. It's a 3. Thank you, Brennan. So when you're trying to decode these notes, because I know that I did a really bad job. It was a fast job. You guys have only had to pick up notes like twice. My calculus classes have to go every couple of weeks so because I'm not as far ahead of, with them. Um, so my cut, copy and paste job was really fast. But when you decode it, if you notice that you've got like uh, exponents going down, it's unlikely that it's a combined like terms in there. They're probably different exponents if that helps decoding it at all. All right. So let's see what we end up with here. 
So I am going to divide x squared into 4x cubed. So it's kind of like what we were doing uh, yesterday and the day before. How many times does x squared divide 4x cubed? So it would go in there 4x times. With the variables, subtract your exponents. Okay. And then we're going to use the same process. I'm now going to multiply, but multiply is going to turn into distribute. Okay. So I'm going to give you a minute. Distribute that through because I have to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. Oh. All right, so 4x times x squared would be 4x cubed. And I always check it, and that's what we planned to happen. So that's what, that's good. It came out the right way. Let's see if we get it. Oh, excuse me. All right, 4x times 3x is 12x squared. And notice I'm not writing any signs right now. Notice I left a gap. I'm doing that on purpose. And then 4x times 1 would be 4x. All right, so our next thing, what's the next thing I'm supposed to do in long division? Thank you, Coral. What's the next thing I'm supposed to do? Tell me in the chat. We did the multiply. What's next? All right. It is, in fact, subtract. But when I subtract, don't write this down yet, okay? So just watch, okay? When I subtract, I'm technically subtracting the whole thing. So it's like having the parentheses around it, and I have to subtract each one of those terms. So really what I'm doing is I'm distributing the subtract through. So instead of subtract, I'm gonna, we're going to shortcut it to change sign, okay? So if it's a minus, you turn it to a plus. If it's a plus, you turn it to a minus. Do you see why I left blanks? Okay. The only time I wouldn't leave blanks it didn't happen in this example is if I had a minus sign there, I'd want to make it a minus sign. Okay. All right. So now we're going to add things up. I try to keep my work as clean as I can. For 4x cubed minus x cubed, I would probably not write a zero there. Okay. And especially with this where there's a lot on the page, I'm trying to keep it as clean as I possibly can. All right, so 2x squared minus 12x squared would be negative 10x squared. 3x minus 4x would be negative 1x, or I would just write negative x. And then just like I did with the long other long division problem, I would drop down my 5. Okay. Then we have to ask ourselves, we're going back to the pro through the process again, how many times does x squared divide 10x squared? So we would probably write negative 10. So negative, and now I'm going to distribute or multiply, right? Distribution is just multiplication. So negative 10 times x squared is negative 10x squared. Negative 10 times 3x is negative 30x, and negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Do you notice how I wrote the signs this time because they were negative? All right. What am I, so what's our new rule? We said it was subtract, but what am I going to change subtract to here? Tell me in the chat. What should I do with that row, that last row I did? All right, we are going to change all of the signs, right? Because changing all the signs is mathematically subtracting the distribution, right? So good job. We're going to change the signs. Perfect. All right. And if we've done it, we've, if we've done the due, our due diligence, this should cancel, right? Every single time it should cancel. We plan it that way. And then we've got negative x plus 30 is 29x. And then 5 plus 10 is 15. And then I noticed that I can't put an x, I can't divide an x squared into an x. So this part is my remainder, but we write it fancy. Okay, we don't write r. So I'm not seeing r29x plus 15. Okay, you don't get to do that. Because that was third grade and this is algebra 2 a trick. Okay, so we're going to go plus 29x plus 15 over whatever you divided by. It's kind of a fancy way to write the remainder. Okay, so what is up here? And you guys notice I don't circle answers. It's a calculus thing. Um, 
So, but that right there is your answer. In calculus on the AP test, if you circle your answer, that is your definitive answer and they won't read anything or else. Um, so there's kind of a double-edged sword. You may be, it's right, if it's, but if it's wrong, they might be able to read a little bit else. So I, I got out of the habit of circling my answers. Okay, let's look at the next one here. Okay, let's look at B. Um, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna make sure we understand our exponents on this one. So it looks like I have a fourth power and a third power, and then this is a second power here. So looking at my dividend, okay, what's gonna go on the inside? Does anything anybody notice anything strange about this or different about it compared to the last one? You guys tell me in the chat, do you notice anything strange? Is there anything missing? Yeah, okay, so there's a fourth dimensional exponent, but look at what Natalie said. X squared isn't there, is it? Okay, but we have to compensate for the fact that there's a missing one. Okay, so you have to check. Um, so maybe this would be a good thing to put out in the left hand column. Okay, so you want your exponents in order. So in other words, whatever your highest exponent is, that needs to go first. So fourth, third, second, x constant, okay, or however high it goes. It could go higher than that. And then if one of our, our exponents is missing, you need to fill it in with a zero, okay? And I'll, we're going to write that in the left-hand column to remind you, but um, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll see what I mean here in a second. So fill in missing, filling. Fill in, I'm trying to read my handwriting from last year and I wrote filling. I don't know what that meant, but what on earth, it's not erasing, come on. There we go. It still writes better than last year's notepad. It's just delaying today. It hasn't wanted to come back from break, I don't think. Fill in missing exponents with zero term. So that's our reminder what we have to do. Okay, so the good news is, is my exponents are already in order, right? So I've got 6x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus, and then I don't, this is where my problem comes in. I need to add in a zero, right? So I'm going to go 0x squared because there are 0x squared, but I need a placeholder there. And you'll see why when we do the long division stuff. Okay, plus 2x plus 8. And then I'm going to take this stuff and put it on the outside. So x squared plus 2x minus 5. All right, so we've got x squared dividing into 6x to the fourth, um, 6x squared times. Right, because I divide the x, I subtract the exponents. And now I'm going to distribute that through. So I'm going to ver be very careful about that when I do it. 6x squared times x squared is 6x to the fourth. 6x squared times 2x is 12x cubed. 6x squared times negative 5 is negative 30x squared. So notice on positives, I don't write the sign, on negatives, I do. All right. I haven't heard from you in a few minutes. So what do I, what's my next step? Everybody should be able to tell me. Tell me in the chat, what do I have to do next? You need to let me know you're paying attention by participating. Yeah, we're gonna change the signs and I'll do it in a different color so that we can see it going on. And do you see how the X squared popped up? So if I didn't put that zero there, I wouldn't have anywhere to line it up with. Okay, so that's my purpose behind doing that. So minus, minus, plus. Okay, the x to the fourth go, because we planned it. 5x cubed minus 12x cubed is negative 7x cubed. 
zero x squared plus 30 x squared would be 30 x squared. And I drop the two x. All right, we're gonna divide again. So I have to ask myself, how many times is x squared divide negative seven x cubed? That would be negative seven x. And then I'm gonna multiply. Negative seven x times x squared would be negative seven x cubed. Negative seven x times two x would be negative 14 x squared. And then negative 7x times negative 5 would be 35x. All right, and again, we are going to change our signs. Oh, didn't change colors yet. Plus, plus, minus. Okay, so let's add it up. Okay, we got, we're gonna have uh, the, the x cubes cancel. 30x squared plus 14x squared is, is 33, no, sorry, 44x squared. And then negative 2x minus 35x is negative 33x. Okay, what do I have to do from here? What's my next step from here? Tell me in the chat. Yeah, we gotta drop down the eight. That's right. So we haven't done the eight yet, right? I'm not done with this yet. Good. Okay, so I wasn't completely done. So, cause I still can divide x squared into x squared. So as long as I can keep going, I keep going. Okay, it's a way it, when this becomes uh, greater than one of these exponents, that's when I stop. All right, so I got to ask myself, how many times is x squared divide 44x squared? That would be 44 times. Okay, so 44 times x squared is 44x squared. 44 times 2x is 88x. 44 times negative 5 would be negative 220. Okay, one more time. Let me know you're paying attention. What do I do next? You're probably copy and paste it at this point, right? Change things. Good job, Brendan. Change signs. We know what you mean. No spelling errors in, in math, right? All right. Change signs. Change signs. I would have probably done it. It would have taken me three times to type it, so don't worry. All right. Change the signs. Okay. Let's go for changing the signs. So minus, minus, plus. Okay. The plus, the, the squares go away. Negative 33 and negative 88 is negative 121x. And then eight and 220 would be 228. So can I divide any more? So should I keep dividing or do I have a remainder? Tell me in the chat. Do I keep dividing or can I stop? Yep, remainder, remainder, remainder. Good, 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 stop. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to say plus negative 121x plus 228 over x squared plus 2x minus 5. Okay? All right. That brings us to about 10 o'clock. It's about time for a joke, don't you think? Um, here's what we're going to do with this. I, I hope we are getting the idea. We did one with the missing. I don't know if we had one. I don't know if there was an example where there's any out of order. But just know that if they're out of order, you got to put them in order before you do it. It's not coming up. It's blank on me here. Let me look and see if there was one that was out of order. Um, that one's not out of order. None of them were out of order. Okay, so you guys can cross out. I know mine's not, for some reason, not coming up. You guys can cross out um, three and four. We'll skip them. 
okay? So that when you guys come back, we'll just do the synthetic division, okay? I like to put more in there because when we're in the classroom, I like to be able to do a couple with you and then have you try some, but sometime in this environment, we don't always have time or, um, or the ability for me to check you, right, as well. So we're gonna stop it at that, and we will go ahead and do our joke of the day. Okay, I don't know what he has for.